I was just so excited, proud, um, and emotional really about Mary Simon becoming the next Governor General of Canada. She is an incredibly um, ex uh, just talented and experienced uh, politician, leader, um, child advocate, and Inuk. And uh, I couldn't be happier with the selection. Also, just as an Inuk, to, to, uh, to hear somebody speaking in Inuktitut and to be given this particular role, um, which is such a meaningful role in this particular parliamentary democracy. Also, for somebody who is going to be welcoming Canadians and celebrating achievement in this country through the Order um, of Canada and through all sorts of other meritorious celebrations at Rideau Hall, to have an Inuk there and being proud of Canadians and celebrating achievement for all Canadians, uh, it, it just, it, it does make me feel as though this country is moving forward and that this country can celebrate um, the different backgrounds and cultures and languages and experiences uh, in all forms of public service. Can I just ask you a question she was asked? Um, actually, it might have been your question, but it's sort of along the lines of, um, this person, the Governor General, is the representative of the Crown in Canada. And now an Indigenous person is the representative of the Crown. And of course, for many dozens of years, we've been talking about this tension between the Crown and Indigenous persons. Does it change? Does it help? Can you maybe, how do you feel about yeah. that, that it's an Indigenous person who's representing the Crown? I think First Nations, Inuit, and Métis in this country will have different perspectives on this. A qu very question. For Inuit, I, th I think of Josie Kusugak, who is um, the ITK president and leader for Inuit for decades. And he talked about Inuit being first Canadians and Canadians first. There is still an immense pride that many Canadian Inuit feel in being Canadian. And Mary Simon, as an individual Inuk, aspired to become the Governor General, uh, said yes when uh, was asked by the Prime Minister, and that was her individual choice. That was what she had decided. She is not representing a group of Inuit. She is not politically representing anyone. She is, as a Canadian, accepting a role to serve her country. She is Inuk, and she brings that perspective and that experience and that pride with her into this role, just as, just as any Canadian who, uh, who has been gen Governor General and who will be Governor General is also proud of being Canadian. Yes, the relationship between the Crown and Indigenous peoples still is a work in progress, but for her as an individual, uh, she has chosen to do this particular role, and I know that I support her 100% in doing it. And I hope that people can see that difference, that an individual Inuk is also a Canadian who is willing to serve this country and has chosen to do so. It, um, just as members of Parliament are First Nations, Inuit and Métis, just as public servants in the Government of Canada also are First Nations, Inuit and Métis, and they should be proud of the work that they do within this institution as well. So I am asking people to see the difference between an individual Canadian and First Nations, Inuit and Métis governance. Why do you think this appointment is so important at this particular point in time when we have communities coming forward with announcements of, of discoveries of burial grounds, uh, residential yeah. schools, churches burning. What do you think Mary Simon can do to advance reconciliation? Mary Simon has been a diplomat. She has been a leader. She also has run foundations she, uh, in relation to children and youth. She's been a tireless advocate for Inuit. Um, she in the 1980s was a part of the constitutional talks between indigenous peoples and the government of Canada and provinces and territories. She has a vast experience in working on very difficult political issues at the national level. She now has an opportunity 
to celebrate success in Canada through her role, to also play the very particular duties of the Governor General in regards to government, but then also in this day and this time, as she said, she can help bring people together, bring First Nations, Inuit and Métis perspectives to Canadians, Canadians bringing those conversations and questions perhaps sometimes to her. She has a unique uh, ability to talk about um, a lived experience, uh, to talk about the issues that she has worked on in her career, but also um, to see um, the future, uh, to see the, the way in which we can come together as a country. And that optimism and that hope uh, combined with the experience and the lived experience, I think will allow for nuanced conversations about reconciliation, a real understanding of the human rights abuses and the atrocities, as she's mentioned, that Indigenous peoples have faced in this country and that we are still learning about day after day, especially in this summer when so many children have been found. Um, but I think these conversations are necessary and that she is uniquely placed to be able to have those conversations in a way that respects the victims respects those whose rights have uh, um, have not been upheld by this government at the same time understanding how to move forward how to reconcile with those things and how to build a better country that is a lot for governor general uh, um, but at the same time she understands i had a chance to speak with her she understands that this is a very difficult time in this this country and that she has a healing role to play and she's ready to do it what do you hope or imagine uh, you know, her being from the north uh, will do to the profile of what it is like for those who live in the north in this country and for all of us who live in the south who maybe have not visited there or don't have a lot of experience? What do you think having her appointment to this role will, will do to the awareness for, among southern Canadians of Canada's north and its issues? First of all, I think people will hear more ineptitude than they've heard before if they go to Rideau Hall or if they're interacting with the Governor General and I think that's wonderful. The more that Canadians understand that Indigenous languages are, thri are, uh, are, are not a things of the past, that there are thriving Indigenous languages such as Inuktut, um, then people's perspectives will be open. I also think that because so few Canadians have been to Inuit Nunangat and have been to the North or the Arctic, that she um, brings a lived experience and uh, ability to tell those stories of Inuit Nunangat, of Inuit, that Canadians really, in my experience, as somebody who's told some of these stories myself, that Canadians want to hear, that Canadians want to understand more about the, the Arctic in this country. Uh, she, and I believe from all that I know of Mary Simon that she'll also be wanting a conversation not just to tell the Inuit side, but also to tell about how we are connected, uh, how, say, um, the Arctic and what has happened in the Arctic has impacted um, Canada and Southern Canada, how her lived experience is a melding of both Southern Canada and Arctic Canada. To bring people together, I think, is something that she is uniquely suited to do. She said during her press conference that she wants to remain apolitical and not speak about current events. Do you think that that should be the case? I mean, shouldn't she speak out about some of these atrocities that are still going on against Indigenous peoples? Uh, I don't know uh, um, the hard and fast rules around the Governor General and the Governor General's ability to speak candidly and openly about um, what is happening in this country. Uh, I, I'm sure that there are some limitations on the critiques that any Governor General should give to a government, to the politics of a government. But I think um, a Governor General can speak uh, with emotion and passion about the things that are difficult in this country. Whether it's the wildfires in British Columbia, or whether it's the loss of life um, uh, through, uh, through racism and, and, and violence, there are things that have happened in 2021 that I would hope that a Governor General 
could weigh in on and be empathetic to those who are experiencing hardships and pain, just as, as much as I would hope that a Governor General could do the same when um, there are these types of events unfolding for Indigenous peoples in this country. She said during her remarks that she wants to be an example for young women, and yet we saw with the Nunavut MP, Munalak Kakak, that she, she left the House of Commons where she's leaving, she won't be running again, saying that this isn't a place for her, that she didn't feel safe as an Indigenous person. And I'm wondering if people, young people hear this, what should they take away from that? There is now an Indigenous Governor General, but one of the youngest Indigenous MPs left saying that this is not a place for her. I think there still is a long way to go to build parliamentary institutions that support all people. Uh, that starts with the precinct and how um, the government of Canada ensures that all Canadians, whether they're members of parliament, whether they're visitors, whether they're there on official business, are treated with respect and that are not treated differently based on the color of their skin or their gender or their age. I think it's also uh, something that um, is a difficult conversation within the House of Commons and within partisan politics that is beyond just the individual characters of the leaders of the Conservatives and the Liberal Parties and the Greens and the NDP today. I think that this, these institutions need to reflect on how to become more inclusive, more respectful, and also more caring of their peers and of those who do work in uh, this federal, uh, federal structure. And individuals may have very different experiences, and I think Mary Simon uh, will take on this role knowing full well what the Member of Parliament, Mumula Kakak, has been through. And also, um, I believe that the institution of the Governor General has also taken those words. We do need change, and it does need to be instant. Um, build these bridges and work through these challenges. Not everyone um, is going to be able to see that process through to the beginning and the end. And I respect uh, Mumila Kakak for her truth and, and the remarks that she gave. But um, this is, these are remarks to build upon, not to walk away for all of us from. And uh, I say that with the, the greatest level of respect for all those who can no longer do work because of systemic racism, because they have not felt welcome, but also recognizing that, that others will take on that fight as well. It is not just one person that will um, make or break um, the advancements of Indigenous peoples in this country. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. You're welcome.